All right, we're in C++ world again. So, introductions. Okay, so this is Stefan T. Lawawade. Stefan is a developer on the Visual C++ team. Stefan works in the libraries group, and strangely enough, Stefan works on STL, which is really surprising when you figure that that's actually his initials. So we always find that a bit of a chuckle. In the picture here, we have Mohammed Usman. Mohammed was our QA or tester for this feature. Uh, Mohammed's at the Canadian Development Centre, and uh, so Stefan's never actually met Mohammed. I went up there one time for the day and had lunch with him. <laughs> but uh, this is just one example of how building software at Microsoft is becoming a very distributed thing by the time we have you know, people working in different countries all being part of different feature crews. It's, it's another interesting challenge to getting software out the door. Excellent. He actually just uh, sent us uh, his picture today, and this is the first time I've seen him after working with him for how many months? A long time. So, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, Damian Watkins. Uh, he's a, a PM, a program manager on the uh, Visual C++ libraries team. Yeah. Um, you also do front end work, right? Yeah, I do the front end yeah, work. Yeah, so he too. does everything. Um, oh, not everything. I don't do the IDE. So. <laughs> no IDE in, in that we have a uh, common interest and uh, no back end, but the front end language features, and the standard library stuff that we're doing, uh, Damon takes care of that. Uh, and Excellent. we've been working uh, most recently on um, our rewrite of the standard C++ library. Uh, mm. We are essentially, we're not quite ripping everything up from the foundations, uh, but we're rewriting substantial chunks of our code uh, to take uh, advantage of new language features. Uh, that are coming in uh, the next version of the C++ standard that's being supported in Visual C++ uh, 2010. And uh, we're also making other changes um, to uh, increase our performance, uh, which is something that we really care about. I mean, at this point, you're using C++ because you care about performance. You need to run um, at the greatest efficiency on the biggest hardware, and if the standard library isn't um, being as efficient as possible, then people are going to want to avoid it, and that's going to lead to you know less robu robustness in their program. So sure. we want to encourage people to use the standard library by making it as efficient as possible, and also few, the, the fewest number of bugs. So Good. increase performance, decrease bugs. That's sort of our day-to-day -day work now that we've essentially finished the rewrite, and now we're just cleaning up uh, little bits and pieces there. So in beta one, uh, we've got uh, the bulk of our rewrite there. So uh, pretty soon users will be able to take it out uh, for a test drive and uh, see all the new things that we're adding. Perfectly. Now, we, we talked to you before on yeah. STL. We had a nice whiteboard session. So what exactly have you guys ripped out and re-put back in? And talk about what's new Yeah, here. so I guess it's, it's good to go back a couple of years uh, maybe and see where this has all come from. As most people know, we get our base STL implementation from a company called Dinkumware. And for the last few versions, uh, let's say starting with version 8, we got a, a version from them and then we uh, modified it. We added some functionality, etc. And so we started to diverge. And uh, although it was done with the best intentions, it also had some negative consequences. So one you'll see and we'll talk about later on is that Dinkumware implemented their own switch for doing iterated debugging and we implemented our own switch for doing iterated debugging. And then it very much confused customers because customers were, well, which switch do I use and when gives me the advantages like a debug time and what's in there at runtime. It also, in a bizarre way, kind of confused our linker because now you could build different translation units with these switches set different ways. So if you're passing STL objects from one DLL to another, then they would not know that they were talking about something with the same name but that had a different size because there was extra debugging information in. So occasionally mm -hmm. people get these really weird, hard to repo bugs coming around. And through um, Visual Studio uh, 2008 or VC9 as we called it, they, they even diverged a little bit further. And so one part of what we decided to do with this STL uh, sync work, as we said here, was to kind of bring some sanity back there we've gone back to an implementation that's much closer to the Dinkumware base that we get in, where merging all the iterator switches, iterator debugging switches, so there'll just be one. Uh, we're in the process now of finishing off defining what the same subset will be of those, or at least for the default version. 
and we're also looking at how we can fix up the linker so that uh, it'll actually detect these mismatches and give you a warning and so therefore stop you shooting That's yourself. That's a hard error. Yeah, so maybe Stefan can talk a little bit about how that comes around and why it's fairly difficult. Yeah, so, um, so Dinkumware, this uh, company that we're talking about, they're a very unusual company because their purpose in life is to sell, sell standard C++ library implementations. Hmm. And that, that's what they're dedicated uh, to doing. It's headed by um, PJ Plowger, uh, who's on the C++ standards committee. Uh, so we work with him. Um, he's the one who actually writes our uh, STL implementation. And uh, like Damien said, um, because uh, we maintain you know, our own sources in the Visual Studio code base, um, they had begun to diverge. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when it started to happen, but definitely it grew around uh, 2005 uh, and a little more in uh, 2008. And then when we shipped um, the TR1 extensions in uh, 2008 SP1, um, we got that um, big drop of code directly from Dinkumware. Um, and uh, now they're working directly in our source base. Um, we actually have a computer it's sitting right under my desk um, that they remotely connect into and then they can uh, check in things to our source tree, run tests and things like that. Uh, so now we're working um, uh, in a much more uh, direct fashion uh, rather than them just giving us drops of their master sources and then us trying to hammer it in um, to whatever we've modified and potentially breaking things along the way and they have no insight into what our sources look like because they're completely different. Um, we, we even had cases where we had bugs that they had fixed long ago but we hadn't gotten um, the updated code from them. And essentially now what we've done is we've given them our code and we've said here's all of the um, iterator debugging stuff that we added for security in 2005 and you know later advanced in 2008 um, and then they unified it with their own debugging switches and gave us back the unified implementation and so now we are in sync we call it the STL sync project uh, internally uh, with their master sources um, but if you just look at what's changed between 2008 and 2010, it looks like a massive rewrite because the code base has diverged for so long and now they're coming back together. We're not really rewriting everything. It's just we're getting a new update uh, from Dick Warner and they've made, you know, five something years of improvements in the meantime. Mm. So we're getting for, uh, things like performance improvements for free um, just because they've managed to find these bugs in the meantime. Uh, and now we're finally uh, getting the code from them. And a, uh, another thing we tried to do with this sync was also look at the new C++ OX standard and see well what features could we add in the front end of the compiler which we could then leverage in the uh, STL work. So um, last time Charles and I spoke we were talking with the PCP team and they yep. wanted us to implement lambdas so they could use lambdas uh, and also another part of the specification which we call transporting exceptions. So that was work we did here that helped enable the PCP team and the work they have done. Great. So by implementing these R value references, uh, the standard template library is just you know, bounds with places where you can use these things to massively increase your performance. And in a, it's a very simple kind of model for users. I mean, most of the heavy lifting happens inside the STL. And to allow us to take advantage of that, you just need to write more or less two new functions. So people are used to copy constructors, for example. Now they have to get used to writing move constructors. And they're used to assignment operators. So they have to get used to writing move assignment operators. But if you write those yourself, for your own classes. You can then put them into vectors and all these other STL types and we'll automatically hook in and use those when we have to reallocate a vector for example and move all the elements from one side to another. We could spend a lot of time talking about those C++ OX features but in fact um, we have already to a degree, Stefan's done a couple of magnificent posts on our VC blog. Three of them. Uh, yeah, three actually. So the first dealt with um, auto, uh, re-implementing of that uh, static assert and lambdas. lambdas. Yeah. And then the second one dealt with R value references and he's just put up the post on decal type. So um, we may tend to use them in some of the code examples that we show you but if you'd like to get more details you've got two choices. You can either 
go to the blog and read those and we love to get your comments there. Mm -hmm. Or we're sending Stefan out on the road and he's going to BoostCon where he's doing two presentations or two sessions next week. So mm. maybe Stefan can tell you what's in those. He was just wor working on the slide decks when I, when I walked in. <laughs> cool.